To create a DAO on Homebase, click on the Create DAO button. You'll then be asked to select a template. Currently, Homebase supports two templates, treasuries and registries. Treasuries are used to manage resources collectively, while registries are used to collectively maintain a registry to govern smart contracts or create marketplaces. And they also have treasury functionality embedded into them. So let's configure a registry. You'll be taken to the DAO settings page where you would provide general information about your DAO. You would set its governance token, its administrator, and its guardian. Next, you would configure your proposals and voting settings for your DAO. How many levels do you want your DAO cycles to last? Let's go with a short 50 levels. Then the proposal execution delay refers to how many levels need to pass for your proposals to become executable. Notice that this amount has to be more than double your cycle's duration. So let's go with the bare minimum, 101. Then the proposal expiration threshold refers to how many levels need to pass for a proposal to become expired. Notice that this amount has to be bigger than the proposal execution delay, because if it is not, then your proposals would never be executable because they would become expired before they could be executed. So let's go with 151 which would leave us with a time frame of 50 blocks where proposals can be executed and have not yet expired. The required stake to propose is the amount of the governance token that needs to be staked in order for a proposal to be created. Let's go with 10. Then you would configure the amount of tokens that would be returned in case your proposal gets rejected. And finally, you would set the minimum and maximum transfer amounts that can be proposed in DAO transfers. We can set the maximum to 100, for example, and leave the minimum at zero. And now you will configure your quorum settings. The quorum is a percentage of the governance token's total supply that needs to be reached in votes for our proposal to be considered passed or rejected. Each period to a new quorum threshold is calculated based on their previous period's participation. The first value that you need to set is the initial quorum threshold for your DAO. Next, you would configure the minimum and maximum amounts your quorum can get adjusted to after a period change. Next, you would configure a value called quorum change, which is a value that gets computed internally in the formula that calculates quorum adjustment. And finally, the quorum max change is the maximum amount your quorum can change in between periods. If you click on continue, you'll be taken to the review information page where you'll be able to see everything you have configured so far. And if you see anything you'd like to change, you can just click on the edit button and you'll be taken to that part of the creator and you'll be able to change your settings. If everything looks correct, you can click on the launch button. Connect your wallet if you haven't already. And you'll first deploy the metadata carrier contract, which is a contract that contains your DAO's metadata information. And each of these steps here takes a while. Next, you would confirm the origination of the actual DAO contract. 
after the metadata carrier contract has already been deployed. And finally, after the DAO contract has been deployed, you just need to wait for Homebase's indexer to pick up your DAO's contract. After your DAO has been properly indexed, you will see a button that says go to my DAO. And if you click on it, you will be taken to your DAO's page. <laughs> 